beautiful. The scripture reading today comes, comes from the Gospel of Mark, actually. And the chapter is chapter 10, verses 32 to 44. And the word of God says, They were on their way up to Jerusalem, with Jesus leading the way. And the disciples were astonished, while those who followed were afraid. Again, he took the twelve aside and told them what was going to happen to him. We are going up to Jerusalem, he said, and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death and will hand him over to the Gentiles, who will mock him and spit on him, flog him and kill him. Three days later, he will rise. May God bless the beginning of his work. Amen. Thank you, Ellen. All right. You know, it was just about 100 years ago um, that the first woman was elected to the United States House of Representatives. 1918, right around then. Her name is Jeanette Rankin, and uh, she's actually very well known, not just for that, but for something else, a strange coincidence in her life. Uh, that year uh, that she became, uh, actually she was the representative from Montana, and she had run on a pacifist platform. She had been a lifelong pacifist, and she had promised to do everything she could to keep the United States out of the war that was already raging over in Europe. And uh, it wasn't long after she got into Congress that uh, Woodrow Wilson called on Congress uh, for an act of war. So nobody was surprised when Jeanette Rankin, along with about 50 other uh, representatives, voted against the war. Well, she got out of the House of Representatives soon thereafter, and she spent the next 20 years working in the pacifist movement and uh, also working uh, to help uh, curb child labor, and then decided to get back in. She got back in to uh, Congress on the same platform, a peace platform, which she had been promoting all her life, and she got back into Congress in 1940. And it wasn't long before uh, December 7th, 1941 came along, and the day after, December 8th, uh, the president asked for another declaration of war. And there were many people that, on that day, having been attacked, uh, the United States having been attacked, who were surprised and greatly upset that when they voted uh, for this uh, the declaration of war, it was 500 and, or 453 votes to one. Uh, she had voted against the war. And to say that people were upset about this is an understatement. Uh, her brother sent her a telegram from Montana, her home state, that said, Montana is 100% against you. 100%. She was, uh, uh, people were, were very upset, but there were a number of people, and there are many articles right from this time, from a week or two after, and since then, who have, though they disagreed strongly about her vote, who admired her courage. To have the courage of her convictions. One writer said that there were probably a hundred men in Congress that wished they would have voted against it, wished they could have voted against it, also being pacifists, but did not have that courage. Courage is something we certainly need. And we mostly read about the flaming courage, this fast-burning courage that's required when an emergency comes up, right? We read about firefighters and police officers, uh, about soldiers and about bystanders who risk their own lives in order to help other people. And we are so impressed by that. I always wonder, would I have that kind of courage that would be required to, to put my own life at risk? But there is another kind of courage. It's the kind of courage that I see a lot here in the church as I work with people. It is the slow burning courage that we all require. The kind of courage that can help us each and every day. It's the kind of courage that can help us to, yes, not only say things what we believe, not only proclaim what we believe, but then to do what we believe. To do it, to stand up for our principles, to stand up for what we believe, even when the situation is difficult. That kind of slow-burning courage, the kind of slow-burning courage we need every day as we face temptations, 
As some choice comes upon us to do what we know is right and do what we really would enjoy doing. To have that slow burning courage required to make the right choice there. Or maybe it's just the slow burning courage for some of us at some points in our life just to get up one more day. Just to fulfill all the responsibilities that we have. Instead of doing what we really would want to do, which is to pull up the covers and to go back to sleep. Now, we need this kind of slow, burning courage. Man, it is a kind of courage that I admire. To me, it seems like the difference between a person who is a real grown-up and a person who hasn't quite got there yet. This courage that can keep us going day after day, doing what we need to do, following the difficult path that God has set before us. And nowhere do we have a better example of that than in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ had this slow, burning courage. He kept him going. And we see it in every encounter along the way as he would encounter people uh, that he was uh, in conflict with as he was exercising demons, as he was preaching to crowds, as he was continuing on the journey, as he went into towns and he spoke, Jesus Christ spoke to people and they all turned their back on him and they all walked away. And he could do no great acts in that place because of their lack of faith and understanding, because of the hardness of their hearts. And he kept going. And he kept moving forward. How do we do this? For those of us who have to keep going day after day, who want to continue to do what God wants us to do in our lives, not just what we want to do, how did Christ do it? The only thing we see over and over again, and you've heard me say before, is that Christ made a point in his life to reconnect with God through prayer, through devotion, through meditation, and through worship. Over and over again, Christ would set himself apart, especially during difficult times, and he would go apart, apart to pray. He would go into the wilderness. He would go into a quiet place. He would go to a mountaintop. He would go down by the sea. He would go into the garden. All of these places, places where Christ could go, and he could recharge that courage. That's what we need sometimes. We need to re we have the courage, but it's just worn down by life and we need to recharge it. We need to get it going again. And that's what Christ did. He would go to these places and he would feel God's spirit with him and that courage would be recharged. And he would be ready for another day. How crazy it is that Christ felt that as a need in his life. And yet often we do not. We think we can get away with, without having this one thing that Jesus absolutely requires, this time to recharge, this time to worship and to pray and to have a, a real devotional life. Uh, you know, it's, it's such a great source for us, such an untapped source so often. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I'm worried about something, I'm afraid about something, I'm stressed about something, and I don't even think to go to God in prayer. I know that's really all I need to do, not to solve the problem, but to give me the courage to deal with it. What if we could do that more often? Why is it that we don't uh, tap that source of courage in our lives? I like the story of the uh, man who was driving down the road, he was dressed up in his business suit, he was going to a meeting, and he sees along the side of the road a woman who was also dressed up in her business attire, and she was changing the car, a uh, tire on the car. And she had got the car up on the jack, and she had taken the tire off, and he noticed that she was, she was working to get the spare tire on, and he knew how difficult and messy that was, and he thought, oh, well, I can stop, it's hot, and I'll get messy, but that's all right, I'll stop and I'll give her a hand. So he went out, he, he asked her if she would like some help, and she said, oh, I'd love some help. And so he put the tire on, and he tightened the lug nuts all up. He was just about to take the car down off the jack, and she said, oh, would you let the car down really gently? My husband's asleep in the back seat. Isn't that the way it is with us? You know, that source of strength, that help, it's right there, it's in the back seat. We know where it is. All we have to do is call on it. All we have to do is use it. That's what Jesus Christ did throughout his life. We need courage. We need strength. 
like Christ. During his life, call on that courage, call on that strength, and it'll be there for us. And we'll feel it. Yeah, we'll have the courage we need to do it, what it is we need to do in that moment, whether it's to overcome temptation, whether it's to make it through another day, whether it's just stand by our principles and make sure our actions match our thoughts and our big words. Jesus required this kind of courage. He needed it because he had a great mission to accomplish. That's how he used his courage. Yeah, he used it every day as he was exercising demons and speaking to large crowds and, uh, and, and facing discouragement of his own. Meeting people who, who didn't join him, who were invited to join him and walked away from him. He needed that courage. But he needed it most of all for his trip to Jerusalem. And this is why God had sent him not only to teach us and to heal us, but to die on a cross. And it was to Jerusalem that Jesus knew he was going. We read it in our scripture reading today. In fact, he predicted it to his disciples no less than three times during his ministry. Even before he turned his steps to Jerusalem, he knew that's where his path was going to take him. This was a big change for Jesus, going from Galilee to Jerusalem. Galilee. Jesus was loved in Galilee. He had crowds following him in Galilee. And he was very popular there. And he could have, if he had chosen to, stayed there. He could have lived a long life. He could have died a respected old teacher there in Galilee instead of going across that border and crossing the border to Jerusalem. That was dangerous. It was full of uncertainty. It's where his enemies or, but he made that choice. He crossed that border. Someone once said that uh, the border between Galilee and Jerusalem was the most important border in world history. Because Jesus chose to cross that border. So we have that same opportunity to use our slow burning courage that we get from God to cross those kind of borders. From places where we feel comfortable and we feel certain and we're not challenged to other countries, to other ministries, to other challenges in our lives, to new opportunities to serve God and to serve one another that we've never done before. And it's uncertain and we're comfortable here in Galilee. But here's this border that we can cross over into this new country of service. What an amazing chance that is for us. And yes, it's scary, but remember, we do all sorts of things in life uh, by necessity that we don't get to practice for, we don't get training for, nobody trains us to be an adolescent. We start being an adolescent and we learn along the way. We are prepared, I hope, to go off on our own someday and to leave our parents' house, but we're never fully prepared. We never know everything about it. We learn once we start doing it. How do we learn to get older in our lives? To be older, we become older. And we learn how to deal with those challenges. And that's what we can do as well. Never turn our back on some challenge because we're afraid that we don't understand it or we don't know how to do it. Then we do it and then we learn how to do it. We need this kind of courage. This kind of courage Jesus showed in his trip as he crossed that border from Galilee to Jerusalem. I heard a minister once tell a story about a friend of his who was having surgery. Uh, one day. It was such a big surgery, they had put her in the hospital the night before. And uh, this, uh, this someone, a guy had come to see her, this minister had come to see her, and she had had a card there that she was looking at that her granddaughter had given her. And the card had this big, ferocious looking lion on the car, a picture of him, and, uh, and the lion had his nose and mouth in this large bowl and was clearly eating something and enjoying it. And uh, the caption underneath says, and the lion eats another bowl of courage. And that caught my attention. The lion eats another bowl of courage. That's what we need in our lives. Remember that that lion is Jesus Christ and that lion is us 
as well. That willingness to eat another bowl of courage, to know that that courage is available there for us when we need it. And so when the doctor, news from the doctor is bad, right then we can know that the lion can eat another bowl of courage and we can make it through. When our lives seem pointless, when we feel like we're stuck in some dead end, Getting up day after day, and at that moment in our lives, the lion can eat another bowl of courage and help us to make it through. When we're facing some temptation, something we really want to do, something that always gets us, at that moment, the lion can eat another bowl of courage. And we can make it past that temptation for the first time, and then again, and again, and again, as we move forward. Jesus Christ, you know, he, he went off on his own. He recharged his batteries over and over again. He not only found courage, he showed it in all the borders that he crossed throughout his ministry. And he's offering it to us now. The courage we need to do what God is calling us to do, the courage we need to make it through another day, it is right there. So reach for it and grab it and make it your own. Let's bow in prayer. Loving God, we give thanks for the courage that you offer us, for the courage that we have felt throughout our lives. Lord, help us to tap into this as a resource each and every day. Help us to find ways that we can recharge the courage that is within us, the seed of courage and to help it to grow through your spirit, Lord. And Lord, we know that there are lots of ways that uh, we have this opportunity through devotion and prayer. And Lord, we do know as well, we can come to this table and we can be recharged. We can feel that courage growing within our hearts, that ability to take on all the challenges that we have ahead of us here in this week ahead. Lord, as we prepare together here at this table, as we prepare to join together as one community of faith and to receive this bread and this cup, help us to feel your spirit with us. It is in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. I, uh,